Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about other things to consider besides just an alkaline diet. First, acids are solutions and liquids that are below a pH of 7, and anything above a pH of 7 is considered alkaline. It's important to keep the body's fluids like saliva, urine, and blood on the alkaline side. The normal pH range for saliva is 6.2 to 7.6, the pH of the urine should be 4.5 to 7.8, and the pH of the blood should be in the very narrow range of 7.35 to 7.45, because even slight variations from this range are considered life-threatening. Now, if we become too acidic, our bones will give up calcium to keep the blood alkaline, which over time could lead to osteopenia and osteoporosis. If the pH of your saliva drops below 5.5, the acids in your mouth start to demineralize and break down your tooth enamel. And if the tooth enamel becomes too thin, it can expose the dentin layer, leading to discomfort when consuming hot, cold, or sugary drinks. Too many acids in the digestive system can lead to acid reflux, burning, and ulcers. And an acid pH in the intestines could burn off some of the friendly bacteria lining the gut. The same thing can happen in the bladder if the urine becomes too hot and acidic. Once the friendly bacteria die off, infection can develop. Many times I help women overcome their frequent UTIs by showing them an alkaline diet, but the UTI quickly returns if they drink alcohol, wine, or coffee, all of which acidify the urine, burning off the friendly bacteria and allowing bacteria to overgrow again. By now, you've probably seen all the alkaline diets which are out there. There's slight differences amongst the diets, but in general, we know that eating organic fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes can keep us alkaline, while junk food, excess of red meat, fried foods, and too much sugar and alcohol tend to make us more acidic. But I would also like to point out that it's not just a question of eating a more alkaline diet. There are some other things to consider as well. Let's take a look at these other factors which help to keep us alkaline beyond just the food that we're eating. For example, you can be eating a nourishing alkaline diet, but if you don't digest it well, it can ferment in the gut, turning into a highly acidic inflammatory toxin known as amavisha in Ayurveda. This can happen if your digestion is weak and or the food is too heavy. We also need to consider the gallbladder in our discussion on acidity. And this is because when we first swallow the food, it goes into the stomach where the pH is very acid, it's hovering around two. Our bodies are really wise to bring the food from the outside of the body directly into an extreme acid condition like that. One reason is because the food coming in from outside will have bacteria on it, no matter how much we wash it. These stomach acids will kill that bacteria, but this is why many people nowadays are winding up with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth known as SIBO, after prolonged use of acid reflux medicines, which reduce the amount of stomach acids. Now, once the acidic liquids leave the stomach, they squirt into the duodenum, where a signal is sent immediately to the gallbladder to release the bile to neutralize the stomach acids as they come into the duodenum. But here's the problem. Many, many times in the course of our lifetime, the bile will get too thick and or the sphincter of Adi in the gallbladder can become too tight and it won't relax enough to allow the bile to squirt through. And if either of these two things happen, if the bile doesn't flow when the stomach acids come pouring into the duodenum, the pH of the digestive juices traveling through the rest of the intestines now can become quite acidic. These digestive juices eventually absorb into the blood. So if the digestive juices are acidic, the blood can become acidic. This is why we identify and fix any problems with the bile flow in all of our patients. Nature was wise to give us so many herbs and foods to keep the bile thinned out and flowing, because sooner or later, every one of us will experience problems with our bile. And of course, we have lots of therapies to allow that sphincter to relax when we eat, to allow the bile to come through. But also consider this. The liver is known as the seat of digestion. That means it has to process all the food that you swallow but it is also the seat of detoxification, responsible for filtering all the toxins which come into the body, most of which are acidic. If too many toxins overwhelm the liver, it can become quite hot 
And if it does, when the food comes into it to be processed, the hot liver can turn the food immediately into amavisha, a hot inflammatory acidic toxin. This acid toxin can ultimately affect the pH of the digestive juices, the blood, the urine, and the sweat. Also, if you're experiencing long-term um, grief or emotional upset, your liver will automatically convert your food into amavisha no matter how healthy the food is. And you should also know that 70% of all the cells in your body are made up of water. In ancient times, the water fresh from the earth had an alkaline pH. But nowadays, much of the groundwater, especially in the highly populated areas, are acid from the acid rain. Which is why we have our patients try to consume alkaline spring water, water coming from the earth, which is alkaline, from picking up the minerals as it flows down the mountain streams not water with some synthetic minerals added to the filtered acidic tap water. Now, we can take this concept a little deeper and state that the cytoplasm, which is the thick solution inside of our cells, enclosed by a cell membrane, it's composed mostly of water. The inside of your cells need to be alkaline to promote all the activities that take place with inside the cells. The cellular environment inside of our cells also has a pH of 7, to 7.4. And then let's go a little deeper here. The mitochondrial matrix, the area around the mitochondria, is even more alkaline with a pH of around 8. So a physiological drop in pH, meaning it gets more acid, decreases the function of the mitochondria. Research has shown that keeping the matrix surrounding the mitochondria alkaline will increase the synthesis of ATP in the mitochondria. This is significant because ATP is that energy-carrying molecule found in the cells of all living things. ATP captures energy obtained from the breakdown of the food molecules that we eat and releases it to fuel all the cellular processes in our bodies, which means that ATP supplies energy required for muscle contraction, circulation of blood, various bodily movements, and basically fuels all cellular functions. All living cells rely on ATP's energy. Now the pranic energy that we get from nature, the cooling soma from the moonlight, the fiery agni we get from the sunlight, and the etheric energy known as marut travels to the deepest levels of our cells. Now here's the thing, the cooling lunar energy transforms into kapha and ojas once it comes inside of our bodies. The hot agni becomes pitta, allowing for the digestion of foods and all transformations to occur. And the marut becomes vada, which controls all of our bodily movements. We need to keep a balance of all three throughout our lives. But in this day and age, the stress of rushing, staying up late, constant exposure to the hot and fiery electromagnetic frequencies, eating fast foods and taking too many nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals makes our cellular system very hot. So in this modern era, we have to reduce the things that promote more heat and trend towards the more cooling foods and activities. This means that we must take less synthetic vitamins, take pharmaceuticals only if it's a life-threatening situation, learn how to bring your body back into balance using good food, herbs, spices, and plenty of rest. Resist the popular fads which promote the use of fermented beverages like kombucha, or eating too many fermented foods like sauerkraut, drinking acids like vinegar, taking capsules of turmeric or curcumin, and intermittent fasting which heats up the liver as its five digestive fires rage out of control looking for food to burn up. Don't take capsules of garlic and synthetic vitamins which also heat up the liver. And don't deep fry your foods either. Instead, introduce more somogenic foods like sweet juicy fruits, Warm, non-homogenized milk from grass-fed A2 cows, or goat's milk, ghee, olive oil, organic grains, vegetables, and legumes. Get out in nature and have direct contact with the earth without your shoes on to allow the prana from nature to infuse in your body to mitigate the side effects of being around computers and cell phones all day. It's very hot energy. It's important that we keep our levels of soma up since soma has a big job. It has to transform into both kapha and ojas. Now, kapha lubricates our joints, the stomach lining, 
our brain and spinal cord, nourishing and protecting it. And OGIS is found deep within every cell in our body, supporting the intelligence within the cells. OGIS is our neurotransmitters and hormones, dictating whether we're emotionally balanced, which is the result of cool alkalinizing soma, or hot and angry and fiery, the result of an overload of Agni driving our cellular systems. This is why stress can make you acidic. Now, there's many stressors we can't control, but we can control our bedtime. If you go to bed past 10 at night in the pit of time of day, you become more acidic as your liver struggles to function and the pit or heat rises in your body. That's why the ancient doctors repeatedly recommended an early bedtime for optimum health. So you can see that the pH of the various fluids in the body is something that we do want to be aware of, but this means that you must not only eat an alkaline somogenic diet, but make sure your digestion is working properly so that the digestive juices become alkaline. Also make sure you keep your liver clean and cool as you go through life. Don't forget to go to bed no later than 10 p.m. and always drink pure alkaline spring water. All these recommendations will go a long way to keep your body alkaline and functioning smoothly. Thank you.